what we're going to be seeing and showing today is our Employee Service Center, which ties into SuccessFactors Employee Central. It has a cloud-based solution, generally speaking, an agent focus of how do we help service and work with our employees. Um, what we're here to show really is this the solution. Uh, we're going to see a lot of things from both the employee and the agent's perspective, uh, but with a focus, as I understand your curiosity, is on our service capabilities. Um, as we go through the demonstrations, feel free to ask me questions. Um, we're kind of setting the context right now, but uh, most of this time will be spent doing demonstrations and discussions. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, I intend to kind of cover the demonstrations, such things as uh, employee self-service, service tickets, who owns it, what, how do we respond, how do we search for knowledge, can we do a survey out to the employee when we're done, uh, what, what are the capabilities of the solution out of the box. Uh, and what I hope you take away, and how does this tie in with Employee Central, uh, I hope you get to see that, yeah, ticket management all in one place, we can uh, really easily and quickly support our own uh, employees and associates. But those are the fundamental things I have on uh, the agenda for today. Not sure if there's anything else you want to add to that. I'm going to set up this in about three more slides, and then we'll get into demonstrations. Um, but what you're going to see today is the fact that we embed Employee Central inside of a service environment for our agents to work with. So they kind of have a uh, almost a proxy view into the employee themselves and being able to serve them. Uh, we're going to see a lot around ticket management. You know, how do I see what's come in? What, what answers do I have to do? What questions are outstanding that I can help the various associates with? We're going to take a quick look at knowledge management. So how can employees find information on their own or what kind of content can we provide to them uh, through a service environment? And of course, we'll also have a, a employee portal self-service kind of environment as well. All right. That's you know, fundamentally what we're going to be going through. Let's take a look here. Um, I thought I'd start it off with really the uh, employee central side of the world. We'll come in as the employee, and as the employee, you'll be able to search for knowledge or check on the status of any requests you might have or even create a request. And then as we get that part done, we'll jump over to the service agent. And so as a service agent, you'll be able to handle that new coming request coming in. Uh, do the researching and communications that go along with it. And I don't doubt from just these two fundamental user roles, uh, a lot of questions and conversations will start. So as we kick off the demonstrations, this is the employee role. So we're logged in as Jeff Hill. You're Jeff Hill, and you've got the things that you have inside of uh, all the different aspects of what success factors can provide to you. Uh, and one of those things, if I go to my quick links, is an area that we like to call Ask HR. So as Jeff Hill, if you had a question, you know what, isn't it great when you can research information for yourself inside of a portal uh, instead of perhaps even calling in? Can we hit a knowledge base and get information here? So as I'm Jeff Hill, I can see, oh gosh, uh, you have 45 outstanding tickets. We do a lot of demonstrations with Jeff Hill. Seven of them are awaiting confirmation. In other words, somebody has replied back to me, give me perhaps an answer, or even the ability, hey, let's create a new ticket. But before I even do that, let's just search the knowledge base. So if I had a question about, gosh, anything, payroll, just by doing this quick search, we're hitting a knowledge base and bringing forward various answers. So this might help me out in, turn, in terms of finding out the, the uh, question I have. Ooh, what are my payroll dates? And just by clicking on that, we're taking them into a knowledge management solution. This is something that uh, we provide as a, we actually resell as SAP success factors uh, as MindTouch, knowledge management by SAP MindTouch. And it can contain all sorts of the types of content that you probably typically have in your own knowledge bases, portals, things like that. Very easily found, can contain attachments and documents. In fact, you can even put back a response on it. This isn't helping me at all. I'd like to know what day or who knows what else. But it can be a very rich way of the customer doing their own knowledge search. Uh, so one of the fundamental things that happens from a knowledge base is you generally will give your agents a bit bigger scope of knowledge than end employees 
or as, as SAP works with numerous customers who are large conglomerates, you know, have acquired and, and done things, have legacy workforces from different groups. You know, if I came from one organization, then another, then I should only see things that are pertained to my group and my organization. So yes, it has mechanisms for doing that kind of filtering. From a user perspective, the language, you know, you can use, the, the, there is a ton of standard languages that the, the solution comes with. Um, you know, it, you can log in and, and you know, it'll, it'll show you things in, in the language. But from a, from a, you know, Janice is showing you the, um, the mindset or the knowledge base solution, you know, it, it, you would have to maintain and have translations for all that material. So, you know, for, for let's say the, the, the dates, right, you mentioned the, the holiday dates, right? So all those dates would have to be maintained in, in different languages for the user to see it in that language, if that makes sense. If it's only maintained in English, then, it's, then there's no way they're going to see a different language. When somebody comes into a place like this and they can search the knowledge base on their own and find out, you know, what is it that uh, applies to me, they have, you've now hopefully deflected a ticket. You know, I, they have found the answer they were looking for, off they go, and we've saved ourselves the effort of having to do support for a customer. So let's have those employees be able to find their own information. If they don't, well then let's give them a way in which they can, hey, let's make a request inside of, uh, inside the organization. So here we have them actually putting together a ticket and I'll just do a uh, simple, I don't know, what's an employee thing, uh, leave time request. And you help me with who knows what. And is this urgent for me, immediate, normal priority? What's the category? And here's an example of categorizing the ticket and having the employee really kind of help it get to the right group that might support different regions of the world or different departments. And what's the nature of the category? So is this around transfers? Is it around training and development? Uh, is it around leave time? Uh, whatever it might be, let's put that under benefits. And even have the possibility of having them upload, say, a file, maybe a picture or a document, if, you know, they're filling in a PDF form or something like that. But the idea is, hey, I can start this service ticket request where somebody is going to respond to me. And these choices for categorization are the types of things that you define. We'll give you some best practices, suggestions, you know, break it down by country, and then category, because that helps route it to the right agent. Uh, but you can define whatever your own terms are. And when we do that, we'll submit the ticket and you'll be, get a little message back saying, all right, we have put a new ticket in for you. A ticket was created and an agent will get back to you. Go take a look at your list of tickets or whatever else you might be working on. So here's your list of current tickets that we have outstanding. And in fact, you'll see here, there's a ticket ID 6501, a simple leave time request, whatever that means, and that happened today. And now let's switch gears. Let's actually go down to the service agent side of the world, somebody who's going to be working with employees. And this is the employee service center. So this is what an agent type of user roles work on in terms of a queue of tickets that they work with, and then the ability to handle each one of those. So as we take a look across here, it's a very simple, nice layout for a solution. I've got my functionality across the top. In other words, this is how I work with tickets. These are the employees I keep track of. Uh, I have a set of reports that come standard with the solution and a library of content, perhaps. And down the left-hand side, the ability to you know search for things, check on a calendar, receive notifications within the system much like you do on your phone or if you're on social media, you always get all these notifications that somebody's reached out to you or a new assignment has been given to you. The ability to create a task or a contact or who knows what else we might be doing on your ticket. But let me do a quick refresh here. Because we were just up there on the, uh, on the portal as our employee, Jeff Hill, and I'll be darned if there isn't a new ticket for a simple leave time request from Jeff Hill that came in from the Internet. It might have also come in through an email address. If you have like an ask HR type of, uh, of an email address set up internally, we can route those to the right people. Uh, it could come in from a person actually just clicking on here, handling phone calls. 
this solution really is a ticketing environment. So we have, over the last seven days, a small list of tickets that have come in. But each individual agent can actually have a number of standard filters or even create their own. You know, show all the tickets that belong to me. Oh, I'm working on 91 different tickets. Uh, let me see a little bit of information around those tickets. By clicking on the little charts, I can start to see, all right, how many of these are urgent, normal, immediate? Let's just work with the normal ones. And status might be open or in process or things that I've closed. So I've got some that are open here. And you'll notice as I'm clicking on these little charts here, it's actually filtering down my list and helping me focus in on what's most important to me. And as we work with customers that have their own call centers and people working with numerous tickets, they all have their own ways of prioritizing or, or determining what's, what's important, how do we figure out who should do what. But in this case, just very simply, I can go across a number of attributes. Show me the ones that came in from the Internet. There are 42 of those. So now I'm really focusing in on what should I be working on? What's important to me and you know what's urgent? or what have you from a, a queue perspective, how many different things should I be working on. I have my own little sort list here. If you wish to, just about any field that's related to a ticket, you know, let's, let's pretend that I'm actually logged in as a manager that has visibility to all tickets. Okay. And I can see who it's assigned to or what team it might be assigned to. And a manager can come, come in here and say, all right, I filtered down to what was important to me I'd like to assign all of these to an agent, to a particular team. So they can come in here and just very quickly say, all right, all of these that came in from the internet that are overdue, I'm going to hand them off to the, the triage team who's going to go through them real quick. And each individual user, when they come in, are suddenly going to see more or fewer in their own individual lists. The other thing we can do is we can administratively define business rules that when a ticket is created, depending on how it's categorized or keywords that are inside the initial message or who the employee is, where they live, whatever the business rules might be, that determines which team is going to handle them. So let's immediately just filter them off. This is from the UK, this is from the US, this is from France. These tickets need to go to this team start working on them or this particular agent because it's about this topic and there are experts in there so a lot of queue management by business rule each ticket itself will have a categorization and some kind of ownership who's actually working it be it a team or an individual within a team and then everything that happens how many communications what was our handle time versus our resolution time what steps went along the way so all of that information about each ticket is now available for you to start to report and sort on based on, I don't know, I'm curious about the team, I'm curious about the country, I'm curious about the category or type of ticket it was, or, you know, where did it come from? You know, we're, we're not doing a good job responding to email, but we're doing great with anything that comes in from our portal. So, yeah, there's an administrative, or if you will, a power user, generally a, a business-oriented person rather than even being necessarily an IT-level uh, person. And it's actually a user interface that's pretty much the same as this. I'll give you a quick peek at it. Here I am as the administrative user. Boy, that looks awfully familiar. It's just about the same thing. But as an administrator, I have power for doing such things as managing the users of the system, uh, how we're going to handle our all of our different things that we deal with from an administrative perspective workflows, data administration, usage behaviors, you name it. How do I handle my service capabilities? Where do I determine which employee groups get the tickets, ticket routing rules? So a power user comes in here. And so an administrative user comes in here and uses the user interface itself for doing the configuration of the system. I believe out of the box five categories, so if you want to go five levels deep, if you will, in, in concept. In fact, it's a good segue. If I hover over the ticket number, it gives me kind of a preview of it. Who was it? What's it for? Who's it assigned to? Maybe how is it categorized? Benefits, USA. That's interesting to me. Let's go take a closer look at it. 
So you can get a kind of a preview before you jump into working the ticket itself as the agent. And now, let me kind of zoom out here. If I take a look at my categorization, I only have exposed right now three levels, but we can go up to five. And you can see all these different levels of categorization. And I forget, what was I saying the ticket was about? Leave time. Uh, let's talk about work life. Yeah, who knows? I'm picking, picking random information, but you can have three to five levels, and then you define what those categorizations are yourselves. As the agent, what I have here is the ticket information, and I have numerous tabs. I have a, a header information about who is it, what was the subject. This is what we, the, our employee put up on the uh, portal. It needs to be reviewed by today at 3 o'clock. Uh, otherwise, we'll have some business rules fire that maybe change its priority or status to what's going on. Needs to be responded to by the by 451, and it's due by the 8th. Those again, I'll, I'll sound like a broken record here, but those are SLAs that you define administratively, and you can define more than one set of SLAs. Uh, we're used to serving customers where some might have a service contract that says, you know, respond within one hour and solve within a 24 hours because they're paying you for this. Uh, or it's, you know, regular customers will get back to you within 24, problem will be solved within three days. That's just our service policy. So we let you define what the SLAs are and when and how they apply. And, and that can go across numerous different attributes of the ticket or the employee themselves or service categorization. So it can get really intricate with the business rules if you wish to. But we determine those when the ticket itself is created. All right. A couple of nice little features here. Um, this is my header information. Okay, yeah, who's, who's on it, who's working it? If for some reason I wish to, I can add little tags to it. It's kind of a social media thing, if you will, but you know, this is around payroll in question. You can add as many different little tags to it. That might help you categorize things even another level, and it just might help the agent further in the future go and they find everything that was a payroll question that I dealt with this week. It's a nice way of tagging things. Uh, and then you see a number of tabs here about the history and what's involved with this particular uh, ticket. So we've been looking at the overview page, and that's got the name, address, phone number, if you will, of the employee. It's got the number of interactions, so kind of a history of what communications have happened. It's just the one. This is what we typed up in there as the employee on the uh, portal. Can you help me with? And I've got the ability to respond up to the portal. Maybe try and send that message off to them and that'll show up on our portal for our employee later on and I've got kind of my history of communications going on uh, in terms of communications uh, we can communicate across a number of different channels um, in this particular in the case of this ticket that came in from the portal that's the only way we're going to send things back and forth we'll communicate back and forth but the solution allows us to send email messages to an email address, to make inbound or outbound phone calls, to send SMS messages. Um, in fact, we can have automated messages happening behind the scenes. As we close the ticket out, we'll send an email off to the employee or, or a survey or things like that. So it's omni-channel in terms of communication, but it's all about you know, what is this customer and what is the ticket? How are we communicating with them? our categorization. I can search that same knowledge base, perhaps with a larger scope. So if I have payroll questions, I too can search and find out common payroll things. There's our UK knowledge as well. And again, I'm searching the fire hose, if you will, so I haven't put any actual filters on here. But it, it does, we do have the ability to say, all right, let's focus it in based on the scope of who this employee is, which group they work for, et cetera. I just wanted you to see that, yeah, we have knowledge base access here, and I can, as the agent, I can preview that same payroll thing. 
Oh, well, the date's the 28th on April. You should have known that. Let's, uh, let's go back and reply and say try the 28th. Da 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 da. Are we done? Boom. There's the hyperlink for it. So we'll kind of give them a hyperlink and say try this. We can also put together templates. So here's a standard messaging, hello, dear so-and-so, merge fields, first name, last name, try the following. Let us know if you have any further questions. We post up a real nice message there. I want to mark this as being in process, waiting for, you know, our customer. We'll save that. And we'll post that one up there too. This poor guy is going to get three or four different crazy messages from us. Try this, try that, try the other thing. Last Wednesday of the month due to Christmas, okay. I realized from speaking with this employee, communicating back and forth, this is beyond my skill set or it's running late. Click on Escalate and it'll go to a different team that's going to handle it. Let's throw it out of here. Um, it can also be de-escalated. So we can look at it at the second level and say, no, you should be able to handle this thing. Put a little note in there and, and send it back, if you will. Um, you can also, instead of escalating, you can, as the user working it, you can assign it to yourself, to a particular person, because perhaps you know, oh, this should be handled by Mark. He's the best at this, so let's assign it to Mark. Well, oh, you got into payroll. This should have been a, a vacation time question. Let's assign it to the team that does vacation time. And one other comment on that is that you can also administratively set up these business rules that will automatically escalate the ticket. So as the SLAs get crossed and nobody's done anything with the ticket yet, or there's something else that you look at uh, inside the system, how it's categorized or who knows whatever ever else, hey, we'll set the escalation to happen and then it goes up that, that hierarchy of who gets it next. So. You can do it automatically. You can. Um, I clicked on a tab called Involved Parties. And so by all the business rules and the way I've configured this demonstration system, um, this is the employee we're dealing with. This is who reported it. It was Jeff Hill, not his spouse, right? She could have called in, said Jeff's going to be sick today. Who knows? It's being handled by the service and support team. So what you're seeing here is different business roles and who's responsible. I have the processor, that's Julianne Beyer. That happens to be me, Julianne Beyer. And we can start to add different roles and responsibilities. So who else should be involved in here? Let's add another employee. Let's add somebody from a service and support team. Let's add someone from one of the groups in here. I don't have much data to find there, but basically you can add another role as an involved party. Um, and then one other thought I had about that was that we have uh, the ability to create a follow-up or related ticket to it. Say, let's create a related ticket, a follow-up ticket to this one. We know who it's for. It's for Jeff Hill. It's the United States. Recategorize it, add a little note with it, and then pass it off to the right team. So they're seeing, you know, who it's for, but it's now, you've got a different task. Um, checklists can be lists of, and I probably won't have any here, but uh, we can add a survey. Basically, it's a set of business rules can fire behind the scenes. Once again, as we administratively figure out your use cases, possibly based on who the employee is or how it's categorized, maybe there are certain tasks or surveys that get fired that now have to be completed. So have, you know, if you're going to deal with somebody who's, who has a threatening situation as an employee, well, we have to make sure we do this, do that, do the next thing. So we, we put together the series of, of things that have to happen. And it's a checklist, and, and off you go to do it. It's a concept within SAP and our solution sets. You've probably heard of called determination. Set up the business rules, and uh, you describe, you know, in this case, in this case, in this case, here's what has to happen. And therefore, when we create a ticket that falls into one of those categories, boom, here are the things that need to have happen. The, uh, the solution set itself, if I'm an agent, we support, I think, 24 different languages out of the box for login and, you know, 
all the labels and, and terminology can be translated or are translated for you. Uh, as you add in your own categories and, and things like that, you'll need to translate them to whichever languages you want to support. And then ultimately the text itself, what somebody enters in on a portal, you know, if that does not get translated, that's going to be entered in by them in there. Or have a tile show up. I found it here. Back and forth we go. So Jeff was able to see, oh, all these responses, great, I'm happy I can close my ticket out. Um, and as the agent, you'll notice I've actually got down at the bottom here, I've got my queue. These are all the different things I've filtered down and I'm working on and processing. I can have many different tickets open at once. So if I'm working on something for Dennis Ruffing, who's that guy? Uh, different tickets for that person, I can just keep on working a couple of different things at once. We all multitask now, so we can handle multiple things at once. Um, let me do this. Let me see if I can mark this thing as complete. It's just a random ticket, but I've got my own email address in here. And with all of our conversation around business rules, uh, what I've done is I set up a business rule that uses our survey mechanism. So when a ticket is marked as completed was the way I wrote the business rule, then I want you to send an email to whatever the email address is with a link to a survey. So if I go to my inbox, it'll take it, you know, 60 seconds to get here. There we go. Your ticket number 5750 was completed. And we appreciate your feedback. Would you hit a survey? Thank you very much. And we do that. We take them to a survey landing page. And you can have a survey mechanism that asks them as many questions as you want. Multiple choice, pick one, score it, pretext. Even even an admin, it is a uh, it's more of a, a service manager type of role. But you, you can define within our system, all right, this user role can Great surveys. This user can administer this thing. So, whatever functionality, whichever roles you wish to have, that's all administration. Great. Good answers. How happy are you? Very good. And then submit the answers, and in they go. And if you get a 9% response rate on those, you're doing pretty well from a marketer's perspective. You can have as many, I'm logged in here as our power administrative user again. You can have as many different surveys as you wish. So maybe we ask different people different types of survey questions, uh, depending on who they are or how we help them or, again, how they categorize the ticket. In the case of this survey, I happen to know that it was, once I find it, this one, my customer service satisfaction survey. Actually getting the results back and administrate, administer this thing straight from my environment. So I can take a look at the report. How are we doing? Extremely well, quite well. What were the answers? What would you say? And how many responses we had? So all this information about the survey's results, even when those survey things came in and I can even send it off to a spreadsheet or take a look at it some other way. So I can send it off to a, a CSV file, which is a spreadsheet, and be all done with it. Sure. I, I thought I'd spend a few minutes and kind of share, you, uh, share with you a little bit about the reporting, which is built into the solution. It's always dynamic and live for you, and it's really pretty easy to use. Uh, so as our agent, Julianne Beyer, or any user of the system, Maybe it's more of a, a manager's perspective, but I've kind of got the, the doors open for everything. I went and searched through my various reports for anything that was related to tickets. And these are kind of best practices reports that we provide out of the box that anybody can then add to, tweak, adjust, make it to their own particular need or build their own. And I thought it'd be nice to see, let's take a look at all tickets by agent and status. So as I take a look at the report here, live on, live on the screen, I've got the manager and the agent that's working the tickets 
by whatever status they are, by priority, and how many of them there are. So you can see that Julianne Beyer is a busy person. She's working with 28 low and 19 normal tickets, and uh, her average response time is within whew, a couple of days, it looks like. She starts them up and never does anything else, right? That's what happens in demo systems. But it's really quite simple and easy for someone to say, let me look at this maybe from a bar chart perspective. Let me look at uh, tickets and play around with, you know, what am I looking at from the um, available fields? You know, I don't know if I really care too much to see the manager of the report. So now I just have the agent by status, you know? It might actually be nicer if I saw it status by agent. I'm just going to rearrange this. What's closed? This many. What's been completed? All of these. So I can pick and choose all these different fields. In fact, I don't think I really need to see the response time and handle time, so I'm just going to, you know, uh, take that out. Simplify my report quite a bit. All right, so I've got closed, closed tickets, completed tickets, by agent, of whatever status and priority. In fact, I don't even care about priority. Let's simplify this thing. There we go. What's, what's closed? What has Jeff and Julian and other people been working on? And it might be nice to add in something like the ticket itself. So I've got all of this information for me available in this one particular report. I've got a lot of information. When did it happen? What day of the week? On the ticket itself, by account, by account type, by agent, by blah, blah, blah. Just a lot of information available. But I'm actually dynamically coming in here and saying, all right, Julianne has closed tickets, these two. In fact, one was a payroll issue and one was time regulation. And if I'm curious, I can even drill into the actual ticket itself. So I can go from high level numbers and reporting all the way down to the root it grew cause or information around the tickets themselves that came in. And as we start to do that, we start to combine reports in what we call KPIs for our different agent roles. So much like the tiles you've seen on Employee Central, one well, agent has tiles as well. How many activities do I have? What's my average response time? How many tickets have been created this month? And it's down compared to last month. What things am I working on, et cetera? So we can really help the agent or the supervisors know what's going on for really any metric in the system. Um, right there in a very simple metric for them. Hey, show me how many tickets were created this month. Drill me into that report. Let me look at the data and maybe enhance it a little bit by bringing in another field. Uh, absolutely. They can be role-based. We can define dashboards that actually combine four different report views that are linked together. So I can see three different bar charts and graphs and numbers that tell me something. You know, how are we doing overall in terms of our service environment? And then you say, all right, let's assign it to these user roles. Agents in this category see this, managers in this area see that. 